Howdy folks, it's Nito with AP 2020 Outdoors. I have this old gun. You know how long I've been wanting to say that? <laughs> A long time. Tell you what, before we look at this old gun, let's look at some history. What do you say? So the significance of this rifle is pretty significant if you think about it. For all you longtime fans of guns and shooting. The Frenchman Louis Nicolas Flaubert 1819-1894 invented the first rimfire metallic cartridge in 1845. It was a major innovation in firearms ammunition. Previously delivered as a separate bullets and powder, the rimfire cartridge combined both elements in a single metallic, usually brass, cartridge containing a, perca a percussion cap, powder, and a bullet in one weatherproof package. Before that, a quote cartridge, unquote, was simply a pre-measured quantity of gunpowder together with a ball, bullet, in a small cloth bag or rolled paper cylinder which also acted as wadding for the charge and ball. The 6mm Flow Bay cartridge consisted of a percussion cap with a bullet attached to the top. The cartridges do not contain any powder, the only propellant substance contained in the cartridge being the percussion cap. In Europe, the 22 BB cap introduced in 1845 and the slightly more powerful 22 CB cap introduced in 1888 are both called 6 mm Flaubert and are considered the same cartridge. The cartridges have a relatively low muzzle velocity of around 700 feet per second to 800 feet per second. Flaubert also made what he called parlor guns for that cartridges because those rifles and pistols were designed for target shooting in homes with a dedicated shooting parlor or shooting gallery. 6mm Flaubert parlor pistols came into fashion in the mid-19th century. They were typically single-shot pistols with a rather large heavy barrel. The previous form of cartridge had to be rammed into the muzzle or barrel of the gun and either a small charge of gunpowder in the touch hole or external percussion cap mounted in the touch hole. The main technical advantage of the brass cartridge case was the effective and reliable sealing of high pressure gases at the breech. Because the gas pressure forced the cartridge case to expand outward, pressing it firmly against the inside of the gun barrel. That prevented the leakage of hot gas, which could injure the shooter. It also greatly simplified the loading process and allowed a tenfold increase in the rate of fire over muzzle loaded firearms. Metallic cartridges with built-in percussion caps called primers are now the standard in firearms. So I'll tell you what folks, I got this rifle from my gunsmith yesterday and I, I you know, I tried to do the uh, cursory Google, Google searches and I'll tell you what, I had a heck of a time. There's hardly any information on these rifles. I actually actually went to Gunbroker and I found, here's a couple of quotes I'm going to uh, read to you guys real quickly. Cadet school rifled musket and 22 caliber rimfire. Thousands made, few have survived. Designed for training the wealthy class children of the ruling elite in discipline, higher learning, and generally grooming them to take over ruling power of their parents into the future. You know, what colleges used to do, but do not anymore. Training included drill, military tactics, marksmanship, among other things. Barrel is 28 and a half inches and well rifled, pretty clean. Overall length is 43 inches, sound walnut stock, and then, so I actually took out the tape measure. This rifle is a 43 and a half inches overall length, nominally, and the barrel is about 28 and a half inches, and it also has a uh, cleaning rod. That's pretty awesome. So if, we, if you actually look closely at the action itself, it's kind of interesting. There's a secondary... Oh, for lack of a better term, just a uh, like a breech face lock, I guess. And it actually houses a firing pin. And so you load a cartridge singly in, into the chamber, and then you shut that. And then the, fly, the firing pin actually floats, and then the hammer obviously strikes that. So what do you say we shoot it? I know this is, this is at least 150 years old. If we date it to 1870, that's 30. 130, 20, 150 years old. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I can't resist. All right, folks, I got my target set out at 20 yards. I'll just show you real quickly how to load it. Cock the hammer, and then you gotta flip that back. Insert your cartridge. 
shut that, and then you're ready to go. All right, here we go. And it's kind of interesting. It actually has like an automatic ejector. Watch this. I don't know if we can get this on camera. I may have to do this on, on another setup. That's pretty cool. Hey, not too bad. That's pretty wild. So this rifle weighs 4.94 pounds on my digital scale. Little history on this specific rifle. So this is what they would consider the cadet rifle. Uh, from, from what I've read from the limited history is that, you know, it's almost set up like a musket if you look at it. It's got the standard, you know, military type sling swivels. It's got the cleaning rod. And from, from my understanding, these guns were made for the kids, for the youth of that age. And uh, so they would actually train, just like the adults, how to handle firearms. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, we'll shoot a couple more shots here. One more. All right, let's go look at that target. All right, folks, 20 yards, not too bad. I mean, you know, these probably two shots I was, uh, you know, shooting low. It's a very crude iron sights, but that's definitely a minute of squirrel. All right, folks, I'm going to show you the loading process from this view. Cock the hammer, open up the breech, breech face, insert your cartridge, flip that shot, and you can see the firing pin. That actually is a floating firing pin. We'll go ahead and uh, shoot it. I'm aimed safely at the ground. And then when you cock the hammer, this actually ejects the case. Watch this. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So that part actually springs open, which ejects the brass. Talk about a positive primer strike. <laughs> You're definitely not gonna get any misfires with that firing pin. All right, folks, I've got my, uh, <laughs> that's probably my oldest steel target. Thing's, thing's probably 20 years old. Set out at 20 yards. Let's see if I can uh, plink that little sucker. What do you say? Okay, the bottom circle I think is uh, three inches. Oh yeah. Just to let you guys know, if you ever shot these uh, CCI, these are the 22 CVs. 22 short and just a priming compound. What do you say we try the uh, top circle, which is about an inch and a half? Ah, oh, missed. Tell you what, this little uh, five pound rifle is kind of hard to hold steady, but you just got to balance her. There we go. Too much fun. Oh yeah, gotta love these old rifles. The history, you know. I mean, look at that. This is this is the predecessing the predecessor rifle to the modern brass cartridge. That's pretty awesome. You don't see these too often. Check this out. This is pretty cool. <laughs> Those are like little perfect mushrooms. Pretty cool. All right, folks, it's Nito with AP 2020 Outdoors. Remember, support that Second Amendment. We'll see you later, and I thank you.